Babe, why are you sending me this? You're saying if I don't get the paperwork done, I'm, you're gonna get like another sponsor or something? You guys all remember Muhammad, right? The guy who couldn't install the bidet? That's like the most notable thing he's done all season. Well, now he's giving his fiance an ultimatum through text while he's just sitting in the other room. Yeah, sure, he's got tall hair, but that doesn't mean he gets to just do whatever he wants. Babe, why are you sending me this? Babe, are you sitting on the bidet sending me an ultimatum right now? I'm trying to figure it out. Is it possible? You, you can't can... do that, babe. You can't. I'm you your sponsor. I'm your, I'm your petitioner. You can't just like come to this country and get another sponsor. Watch me. And then he just storms out, but his version of storming out is just casually walking out with this smile on his face. But he doesn't leave, he just storms into the bathroom and, and sits on the bidet again. So this season has finally, mercifully, come to an end. And I think it's time to recap some of the highlights, which is just an hour-long loop of John throwing a stake on the floor. But I must admit, there were at least a few good moments with these two, at least when I could hear him, and it has nothing to do with English being his second language, he just talks insanely quiet. He speaks as if he's gonna be charged based on how loud he is. Sometimes they're arguing, and it cuts back to him and I'm like, did he just say something or is, is he about to fall asleep or I don't know what's going on. All I know is Muhammad is tired of it. He's not going to put up with this anymore. What does he have to put up with, you might ask? He has to sit in a house and not work for a few months while she provides everything for both of them. But here's the kicker. She didn't even make breakfast in bed for him before she went to work and she also didn't tell him where the salt is. I need salt and I can't find it. Oh my God, what are you gonna do? I'm already here one day and I, I need salt. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine giving up everything to come to America and the person that you're gonna stay with isn't even gonna give you any salt? For real though, he said that he misses his mother already because he's used to having her make breakfast for him. His fiance is doing everything right now. And what is he doing? What are you doing, Muhammad? You're sitting around blasting water up your ass all day with a bidet that you couldn't even install. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the greatest moments of the season. We've spoken about having a child together. I just feel like Muhammad would be an amazing father. He's just so great with Theron, so I would really love to share that experience with him. Forget the fact that she's 48 for a second. You want this guy to be a father? He couldn't even find this salt. It's very important if I have a child, I will take my child to the mosque, I will with me, you know. If I don't convert and the child is, if the child is more interested in what I believe and I'm doing, like, what's gonna happen? So what do you think Muhammad is going to say to that? They're about to get into a huge argument over some hypothetical kid that they're probably never going to be able to have. I will teach my child, my religion, until they became like adult and they can choose to... What if they choose to not be that at a younger age because so, they're exposed to what so I do? So let me make something clear. Oh shit, he's about to get serious here. He's gonna put on his intense voice, which is the same thing he always does. He has one one option for tone of voice, just default, and that's it. And the default one is like he's always in a library. I can't even imagine him raising his voice. I'm curious to hear what that would sound like. What so I let did. me make something clear. I need salt. You could tell that shit's about to get real. Muhammad just stares at her intensely and slowly starts cranking up the speed on the treadmill until he's at a full sprint. My child, you can't get him confused about his religion while I'm teaching him something. Eve was raised with, uh, let's say, too much freedom. At this point, his whole argument just turns into him saying, I want to make sure my child doesn't grow up to be like my wife. She was raised incorrectly, and I need to make sure that mistake doesn't happen again. And I don't think that she's going to be a good behavior for my child. Yeah, dude, she's a terrible influence. All she does is work all the time for to provide for you and her kid that she already raises. And one night, she even stayed out till 10 p.m. having wine with one of her friends. And when she came home, he was already asleep, so she almost woke the poor guy up. He can't find the salt, he can't get any sleep, he's not getting any breakfast in bed. Th you know, this sucks. I wouldn't want to be in this marriage either. She doesn't have to convert to my religion, but I expected Eve to respect my culture because she decided to, to be with me. So as usual on this show, I don't think they really talked about any of this stuff until he actually got to America, but one of the things he's having an issue with is her wearing revealing clothing, and he has this conversation while he's wearing this shirt. Now, if I did hide anything from you, let me know, because I was very clear with you about everything. Well, so am I. 
I want you to accept who I am. Do you accept that I'm an American woman, that I'm not, I'm not Islamic, and I'm not Muslim? Oh my God. It was obvious that this is all they're going to talk about since the first episode. He met her online after he saw her in a picture with a bikini, and he messaged her saying she looked beautiful in that photo, but also doesn't want her to ever wear that again. I mean, obviously that wasn't the first message, but that's what he thought deep down, and that's what he's finally admitting to her now. At first, I thought this was just a religious thing, you know, because that would make sense, but it turns out it is the real reason is because Muhammad is, quote, uncomfy with potty parts. Those those are his words. You want to achieve that I try and to, to control you? You want to achieve that? No, I want to clarify. I want to no, clarify. that's not because... right. That's happened to you when you when you hang out with your friends. Jeez, I think the you on his shirt got even deeper since the last time we... He is trying to play some kind of mind game shit. Going, he is trying to control her. They, that they, is... That's very disrespectful and rude for you to say that because that is not true. I need salt. Mohammed and I, over the last two years, like, never talked about the specifics of, like, I'm sorry, but how does that not come up at least once if you're gonna move someone across the world to live with you for the rest of your life? And for God's sake, get the man some salt. Is it that much to ask for? She went to the same society I was living in four times, and that's who I am. It was very clear. But that, that was not, like, real reality, like, we were on vacation. You know, Muhammad does kind of have a point because I don't really know if she cared to figure out any of this stuff. She was just mainly interested in having a younger, attractive guy. But she is definitely one of the nicest people who has ever been on the show. And it's funny, a little bit later on, Muhammad calls his mother for reassurance and she's like, dude, you're in another country. You can't tell her what to do there. She's a very nice woman. Stop being so grumpy and just stop trying to tell her what to do. And then Muhammad just does his trademark surprise Pikachu face. I didn't get to like see the day in day out of like how person would like normally act i thought that i don't need to explain anything but how is she supposed to know then i mean yeah you could do research of course but it helps to just ask the person directly you know the person you're going to be living with this is what happens when you don't talk about it you end up with situations where a guy comes over to install a bidet and muhammad is trying to make her go sit outside because she can't be in the same house as an unmarried or she can't be unmarried and in the same house as another guy even though that's what she's doing with him because they weren't married yet i'm not gonna change who i am just because her American friends think that she's gonna be a different person by being with me. I don't know who's even gonna listen to me or her friends. Okay, so here's one thing I can actually side with Muhammad on. Her friends are kind of crazy. She calls all of them the squad, and when they met Muhammad for the first time, it was just, it was, uh, well, let's just watch it, actually. Do we just, can we hug? Can we just yeah. hug? Sure. Like, hug? Hello. <laughs> Did you have you ever watched porn? There is a surprisingly little amount of time between when they met and that question. Her friends don't really seem very interested in getting to know him or, you know, asking about his country or his culture. They just ask shit like that, which I am very grateful for because it's much funnier this way. We're excited to meet Muhammad for the first time to figure out if his intentions are real and if they're true and as genuine as Eve's. <laughs> nah, come on, you're really just here to dig into the drama, let's be honest. That's why we're all here, you know, and you get a front row seat to this. How was the travel? It was very long. <laughs> it was very long. My first impression about Eve's friends, that they are weird. Damn, that's too bad, I really thought they were gonna hit it off. Do you really get you? to drink? Do you feel like drink some wine? Um, actually I'll bypass the wine sure. tonight. So we'll start with some water. Sure got some fresh bread. Oh, you're just gonna bypass the wine tonight. How about we bypass our friendship? You don't just sit down with us and not drink wine with us just because your hot young boyfriend is telling you you can't. All right, thank you. Are you comfortable with us having wine? Yes, I bring the wine with us. <laughs> Are you comfortable with me shotgunning a few beers in a little bit? I might get my friend John down here and we like to party. So, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, you better say something now. Have you ever been intimate with any other women? Like had sex with any other women? No, you never like made out or like... No. You know, I think a lot of people would get uncomfortable with someone asking something like this on the first day they meet. And then they try to act like it's just a cultural difference thing. But, you know, I think they are just weird. How did you know what to do then if you've never... <laughs> no, really, like, did you... Have you ever watched porn? Oh, ever... my God! In Egypt, no one never will ask this kind of question. 
I don't think most Americans would ask these kinds of questions either. Well, at least not like the first few minutes. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. So based on that exchange, Muhammad is obviously not the biggest fan of her friends. He does get a chance to meet them again though, but luckily it does not go any better than it did the first time. They come over to Eve's house so they can all burn some stuff in a fire as part of some spiritual ceremony because, like all people on this show, Eve is very spiritual. She is a free spirit, you might say. What, Tati? <laughs> no, I'm just glad that we're all able to come together. Um, I was worried there for a second, Muhammad, because I thought you didn't like us anymore. Yeah, that's right. You don't like us? No. Why is this guy always smiling? You know, I would say it's a nervous smile, but that happens when you're nervous, not every second of your life. I must admit, I do like how honest and straightforward he is, even if it's with the strangest delivery I've ever seen. <laughs> you still don't like us? Like, you don't like us? Where were that? Mm. I felt judged. That's why I was mad of every one of you. Oh uh, yeah, we were judging you. That's that's how this works, dude. A person doesn't just sip wine this way without judging someone. This is the judgiest possible way you could sip wine. So what did you think about the fire ceremony, Mohammed? Uh, that's something I never experienced before. But did you enjoy it? Did you think it was... I enjoyed it, but... Uh, I can get warm and... So you didn't like the fire ceremony. Okay, you know what? I got that shit from Game of Thrones. My husband knows Peter Dinklage. Everything, it's too weird for me. It's very frustrating that Muhammad isn't open to what's important to me because I feel like I have done a lot to make compromises. I don't know, at least he was willing to give it a shot. I mean, you asked if he liked it or not, and he said he wasn't a big fan, it's too weird for him, but you know, I have to give him a little bit of credit here. He could have just sat inside on the bidet. So after all this, the season came to an end and the tell all happened, which is when all of the couples from the show come together and they all start to judge each other. And it's really, it's usually a lot of fun. So I will be talking about all of that, plus a little bit more about these two in the next video. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and I must apologize for my voice. I, I'm sorry if it was annoying, or at least more annoying than usual, because I was sick recently, but I still wanted to make a video. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around. Um, it looks like we're almost at 100,000 subscribers. I, I don't know how that happened, but that's really cool. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you later. Uh, I can't find it. Oh my god, what are you gonna do? I'm already here one day and I started to miss my mother.